Rwanda is hosting the 12th Regional Conference of Anti-Corruption Agencies in the Commonwealth of Africa, which will be from 3rd to 6th May 2022. The conference is uh, expected to come up with an uh, important resolution which will be useful in the fight against corruption, uh, particularly strengthening good governance for achieving sustainable development goals 16 through fighting against corruption. Combating corruption may have a political cost, but the price of not uprooting it is much higher. In particular, for the most vulnerable members of our societies. For the participants, I'm very pleased to welcome them to Rwanda and trust that uh, uh, the conference will be successful. Rwanda is hosting the... Welcome to Kigali. I am Dr. Kayuhura Muganga Didas, and I will be your MC during these uh, opening ceremonies. And as you know, we are here today for a very auspicious occasion, the 12th Commonwealth Regional Conference for Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Africa, under the theme, Combating Corruption for Good Governance and Sustainable Development in Africa. Corruption is and has always been a threat to life, to any sort of society's development. It is a threat and a virus, so to say, to economic, social, political, judicial, legal, etc., for any sort of development. It has been acknowledged as an obstacle to democracy and good governance and may be a source of instabilities and lack of peace across the world, where and in case there are no corrective measures put in place. It has been reported that uh, risks of corruption even worsened in some countries that lacked sufficient accountability and oversight, oversight mechanisms in crisis response during this COVID-19 period that we are sorry but surely getting out of. That noted therefore, it reminds us that the fight against corruption is and shall always be our collective responsibility, not just for individuals, not just for individual countries, but for us all collectively, if we are aiming to achieve the SDG 16, as we already committed. We are thus very pleased to have you uh, today with us, delegations, policy leaders, and eminent personalities from all over the Commonwealth membership in Africa, and those that are coming even from far beyond. We are all gathered here to reflect upon our respective roles in fighting against corruption, exchanging and learning from each other in regards to suitable strategies to combat the scourge of corruption. On behalf of the government of Rwanda and, on the, on, uh, and the office of the Ombudsman, I take this occasion to welcome you all. Our guest of honor this morning will be the Right Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, Dr. Edouard Njirene, and he will be joining us shortly. When he arrives, I would like you all to join me in welcoming him as he gets in the conference hall. We shall all raise and welcome him warmly. I'd like to announce that right after the opening remarks by the different presenters and the keynote address for this ceremony by the guest of honor, of course, followed by the vote of thanks, some of us here will be joining the guest of honor for a photo outside this hall. Uh, and at this point, I will announce those who shall join him and will invite others, to, uh, others who are in this hall to remain behind as 
we prepare how to continue with the ceremonies. I will be back shortly as we wait for the arrival of our guest of honor. Thank you very much. Twelfth Regional Conference of Anti-Corruption Agencies in the Commonwealth of Africa, which will be from 3rd to 6th May 2022. The conference is uh, expected to come up with uh, important resolution, which will be useful in the fight against corruption, uh, particularly strengthening good governance for achieving sustainable development goals 16, through fighting against corruption. Combating corruption may have a political cost, but the price of not uprooting it is much higher. In particular, for the most vulnerable members of our societies. For the participants, I'm very pleased to welcome them to Rwanda and trust that uh, uh, the conference will be successful. Rwanda is hosting the 12th Regional Conference of Anti-Corruption Agencies in the Commonwealth of Africa, which will be from 3rd to 6th May 2022. The conference is uh, expected to come up with uh, important resolution, which will be useful in the fight against corruption, uh, particularly strengthening good governance for achieving sustainable development goals 16 through fighting against corruption. Combating corruption may have a political cost, but the price of not uprooting it is much higher. In particular, for the most vulnerable members of our societies. For the participants, I'm very pleased to welcome them to Rwanda and trust that uh, uh, the conference will be successful. Just as I had requested earlier on, um, when our guest of honor approaches, I kindly request all of you to raise and welcome him warmly. I'll let you know when time arrives.
Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor is arriving shortly in a few seconds will be ushered in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may we rise to welcome our guest of honor. We welcome our guest of honor with uh, an applause and as he gets in. Thank you. Um, please get seated. Right Honourable Prime Minister, Right Honourable Patricia Scotland, Secretary General, Commonwealth Secretary in the UK, Honourable Ministers, Chief Ombudsman, Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning once again. I'm Dr. Kayura Mugangadidas, and I will be your MC during these opening ceremonies. As you know, we are here today for a very auspicious occasion, the 12th Commonwealth Regional Conference for Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Africa, under the theme, Combating Corruption for Good Governance and Sustainable Development in Africa. The conference and the theme are right, uh, rightfully regarded and as a forum to meet and share experiences and best practices from our respective jurisdictions in as regards to the fight against corruption and to the good governance at large. It is an important opportunity to advance a high level discussion about good governance and sustainable development in Commonwealth Africa. With this, Right Honourable Prime Minister, allow me to welcome our host, uh, the Honourable Nirere Madaren, to deliver her welcome, welcoming remarks. Honourable Nirere is a chief Ombudsman of the Republic of Rwanda since November 2020. She is also the coordinator of AOMA East African Region. She is a member of High Council of the Judiciary and a member of the High Council of the Prosecution. Before that, she was the chairperson of the National Commission for Human Rights of Rwanda for over eight years and the chairperson of the network of the African National Human Rights Institutions uh, from 2017 to 2019, and vice chairperson of the same network from 2015 to 2017. She was a member of the Bureau of the Global Alliance for the National Human Rights Institutions 
from 2015 to 2020, and she worked with the Parliament of Rwanda for over 13 years in different senior positions, including being a Deputy Secretary General of the Senate. She has been key speaker in various UN meetings, including the UN High Level Meeting on SDGs, annual meetings of Global Alliance of National Human Rights Institutions, and many others, just to give a brief bio. Honorable Chief Omsman, welcome. Right Honorable the Prime Minister, Right Honorable Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Honorable Ministers here present, Honorable Member of Parliament here present, Head of Government Institutions, Members of Diplomatic Corps, Distinguished Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, all protocol observed. Good morning. I am very delighted to warmly welcome you to this regional conference of heads of anti corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa. This 12th regional conference is physically held after the two conferences held online due to COVID 19 pandemic. We salute the efforts made by our gov government to curb this pandemic. At the outset, I wish to express my deep gratitude to Right Honorable Prime Minister for availing himself for this important conference despite his very busy schedule. Many thanks to the Commonwealth Secretariat, especially to the Right Honorable the Secretary General of Commonwealth, Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, for gracing this ceremony by her presence and for, and for the support the Commonwealth Secretariat provides to the anti corruption agencies in Africa. I'd like also to recognize and express my sincere gratitude to. Anti corruption head of stations uh, who we, we are, are with us uh, from that we have from Botswana, Cameroon, Iswatin, Ghana, Kenya, Lesotho, Malawi, Mauritius, Mozambique, Namibia, Nigeria, Rwanda, Seychelles, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda and Zambia. I'm very pleased to warmly welcome you and uh, thanking you for choosing Rwanda to host this 12th regional conference of heads of anti-corruption agencies. Right Honorable the Prime Minister, Right Honorable Secretary General, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Head of uh, Government Institutions, Private Sector and Civil Society, invited guests, the conference provides us with good platform where anti-corruption agencies meet, share expertise, best practice, experience, and knowledge regarding prevention and combating corruption. As you know, globally, corruption has been acknowledged long time ago as a threat to economic development good governance, and rule of law. It has been proved that having bigger impact in developing countries where skills, expertise, and logistics for fighting against corruption are still lacking. But importantly, the uh, political leadership is very key. While the world is striving to achieve sustainable economic development through established sustainable development goals, the 16 and 17 uh, goals related to good governance and economic development 
cannot be achieved without a proper strategy to prevent and fight corruption. Right Honourable Prime Minister, Right Honourable Secretary General of the Commonwealth, distinguished guests, the government of Rwanda has undertaken a number of anti-corruption measures towards zero tolerance to corruption, including adoption of national anti-corruption policy of zero tolerance to corruption, the corruption become uh, a non-prescriptive offense, the use of uh, electronic platforms such as e-procurement, e-recruitment, e-government services, e-payment, etc., uh, with, with the aim to minimize the physical contact with service providers and speed up the service delivery. We have also anti-corruption committees in different public and, and private institutions, have different institutions having the mandate to prevent and combat corruption, where they are coordinated under the advisory council of the fight against uh, injustice and the corruption for the purpose of strengthening collaboration. And uh, the council is established from national level to decentralized entities. Honorable uh, Right Prime Minister, Right Honorable the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, the all above measures have been possible simply because of the political will of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda. The government of Rwanda, under the leadership of His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, adopt a strong political will to fight corruption and other forms of injustice. Also, the cooperation between both national and international institutions in the fight against corruption has been embraced. Right Honorable Prime Minister, Right Honorable Secretary General of the Commonwealth, distinguished the guests. While Rwanda has embarked on a journey towards corruption prevention strategies that have led to sustainable economic development, therefore, new innovative skills in prevention and fight uh, corruption are required to reach our objectives. There is also a need for capacity building for more skills, knowledge, and sharing of experience with our sister agencies and carrying out awareness campaign, investigation, and the prosecutions of such crimes as the virus recovery of public funds involved in those crimes. We are happy with the existing uh, relationship and the collaboration between anti-corruption agencies as well as the strategies to, make it, to mitigate the threats of corruption. The above relationship was also uh, strengthened by the creation of association of anti-corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa that has, been, that has achieved greatly in the fight against corruption. On behalf of the, uh, of the Office of Ombudsman of Rwanda, and on my own behalf, I thank once again the head of anti-corruption agencies in the Commonwealth of Africa for smooth collaboration, which we look forward to continuing for more written uh, initiative as corruption prevention re require successful, success, successive uh, follow-up innovation through research and advocacy. Our collaboration is based on the shared interest in the corruption prevention and the fighting strategies. Let us, therefore, challenge ourselves to use this opportunity that will not only support Rwanda's corruption prevention and fight strategies, but also be the basis for continued collaboration between anti-corruption agencies, private sector, civil society, organizations, and international community. Right Honorable Prime Minister, Right Honorable Secretary General of the Commonwealth, distinguished guests, before concluding my address, allow me once again thank, thank you for your presence in this conference and uh, saying that anti-corruption agencies are leading institutions to fulfill the goal of sustainable development in a partnership with other national, regional, and international partners. Indeed, 
This goal cannot be achieved without a strong collaboration with many institutions and stakeholders. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Honorable Chief Ombudsman, for your welcoming remarks. We are now going to welcome uh, Dr. Roger Koranteng, the head public sector governance at the Commonwealth Secretariat to present the conference's overview. Dr. Roger Opong Korateng is the head public sector governance, Commonwealth Secretariat in London, UK. And he has over the years established and strengthened governance and, and corruption institutions around the world. His accomplishments include like in 2011, he led the Commonwealth Secretariat to establish a successful and vibrant association of anti-corruption institutions in the Commonwealth Africa to promote interagency collaborations and learning through the sharing of experiences and the best practices to promote good governance and development. In 2013, he established Commonwealth Africa Anti-Corruption Training Center in Botswana, which builds and strengthens the capacity in anti-corruption and public sector institutions in Commonwealth Africa. In 2015, he established the Association of Integrity Commissions and Anti-Corruption Bodies in Commonwealth Caribbean. In 2017, to date, he established, in 2017, he established the Regional Training Center of Excellence in Grenada for the Caribbean region. And in 2018, Dr. Koranteng work, worked in Commonwealth, uh, his work in Commonwealth was recognized and was selected as a winner of the prestigious International and Corruption Excellence Award or Innovations. He holds a PhD in public policy from the University of Birmingham, UK, Master of Arts degree in public policy and administration, Institute of Social Studies, in The Hague, the Netherlands, postgraduate diplomas and, uh, in public administration and many others. Dr. Koranteng, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Master of Ceremony, for your kind introduction. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Honorable Ministers and Heads of Institutions present, Honorable Chief Ombudsman of Rwanda, Diplomatic Corps gathered here this morning, heads of anti-corruption agencies in Congo of Africa, our partner international organizations present, distinguished invited guests, the press corps, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say good morning to you again. I wish to add a note of welcome to all of you for honoring our invitation to be here with us today. And a special welcome to the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, Commonwealth Secretary General's team. And here I'm referring to Professor Luis Franceschi, who's, who is the senior director Governance and Peace Directorate of the Commonwealth Secretariat, who oversee the good governance work and then the anti-corruption work in the whole of the Commonwealth. I also want to recognize Mr. Suresh Yadav. He is the Deputy Head of Office, the Secretary General's Office. And 
Natasha Muhoza, Assistant Research Officer, Secretary General's Office of the Commonwealth Secretary in the UK. I would like to briefly touch on the genesis of our association, the Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Commonwealth Africa, and how far it has traveled before I end up with the conference overview. A central part of the Commonwealth mandate is to help member countries face up with corruption and tackle its destructive impact. The Commonwealth is ideally placed in its strategic effort to foster genuine partnerships among all member states. Its effectiveness is built upon the ownership by all its members and the trust and the confidence that members countries have in the Commonwealth Secretariat to work on this important agenda for dealing with corruption. The Commonwealth Secretariat prioritizes anti-corruption work to strengthen good governance. And to achieve this, the Commonwealth Secretariat supported in-country collaborative approaches to deal with the issues of corruption by mobilizing all key stakeholders, institutions, and other stakeholders involved in monitoring, detecting, responding to corruption-related issues. Following years of in-country work, on behalf of the Commonwealth Secretariat, I decided to bring all the heads of anti-corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa to a conference. That first conference of heads of Commonwealth African anti-corruption agencies was held in Gabron, Botswana. In May 2011, His Excellency Lieutenant General Serete Kama Yankama, the, pres the then president of the Republic of Botswana, opened this landmark conference. A direct result of the outcome of the first conference was the creation of the practitioners network of heads of anti-corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa, now referred to as the Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies in, the, in Commonwealth Africa. The conference sought to broker the exchanges of ideas and practices among Commonwealth African countries and to encourage the sharing of expertise in areas where they have a comparative advantage the heads of anti-corruption agencies brought proposal to meet annually for peer-to-peer -peer review and innovative experience sharing that the host and the venue of the annual conferences will be rotated among member countries. So this led to the institutionalization of our annual regional conferences or meeting of the heads of anti-corruption agencies. This annual heads of anti-corruption agencies meeting act as a focal point for the association, providing a forum through which heads peer review country anti-corruption report and share transferable experiences and peer learning. Meeting has so far been held in Botswana in 2011, Zambia in 2012, Mauritius in 2013, Ghana in 2014, Tanzania in 2015, Namibia in 2016, Malawi in 2017, Nigeria in 2018, Uganda in 2019. Both 2020 and 2021, we had virtual conference, which had a record number of 800 participants around the world. This year, the heads of anti-corruption agency, as you all know, is meeting in Kigali, Rwanda. Mr. Prime Minister, I must confess, or I must say, the con our conferences are not only for learning and sharing experiences, but it has also afforded us the opportunity to visit and explore 
our rich and exotic continent. Our conferences have taken us to places like the wonder and majestic Victoria Falls in Livingston in Zambia, the paradise of Mauritius, the awe of Swakobot in Namibia, where the desert meets the ocean, or the greatest beach party our conference have ever held is in Buhari Beach in Tanzania. Mr. Dr. Professor Edward Huzai is here. He's the greatest party organizer I've ever come across. And also the fish, we, our visit to the fish cages and the bird island on the Lake Malawi in uh, Lake Malawi in Malawi, and then the fantastic rich culture of Nigeria. I can go on and on and on, but our conference have enabled us to witness these exotic places on our own continent. We, as a conference, also agree, and I must report that I requested and it was accepted that we have a subscription fee for our members. So the subscription fee we agreed was 3,500 US dollars per agency per annum. And I'm happy to report that we have raised over 600,000 US dollars currently, and it's still continuing, except for a few outstanding in payment, which I will go after them to pay. I told them already. So, the second conference for the heads of anti-corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa was held in May 2012 in Livingston, Zambia. We conducted this assessment of all the anti-corruption agencies and the heads of anti-corruption agencies overwhelmingly indicated lack of training of their staff as a major problem. On behalf of the Commonwealth Secretariat, I invited members' countries to confer with their respective government to consider sponsoring or hosting a training center for member countries. Botswana government offered the best proposal to host the Commonwealth Africa Anti-Corruption Center. On 25th of February, 2013, the Commonwealth Secretariat and the government of Botswana and the Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Commonwealth Africa witness a landmark achievement of launching the Commonwealth Africa Anti-Corruption Center in Habroni, Botswana, which reaffirms the Commonwealth Secretariat commitment to fight corruption in partnership with member countries like the government of Botswana. The Commonwealth Secretariat then dispatched me to Botswana for about three months where I operationalized the center, structured it, designed and delivered capacity building programs, and ensured that the center was up and running before I returned to my base in London in 2013. The center provides training and other anti-corruption initiatives for all Commonwealth African countries in areas such as investigation, public education, prevention, prosecution, professional ethics, leadership, monitoring and evaluation, including training and practitioners exchanges among member countries. A recent independent evaluation conducted by PFM Consort on behalf of the Commonwealth Secretariat, which was directed by our Secretary General, we wanted to know how we are doing. That independent report or survey found that, and I quote, Commonwealth member states have benefited significantly from the center's program and tangible capacity improvement has been realized by the anti-corruption agencies, quote, ends. The survey responded by 65 anti-corruption agencies representatives find out that, and I quote one, over 80% consider the center courses had significantly expanded their knowledge. Two, 
over 70% reported significant improvement in their ability to perform their current roles. Three, over 68% reported making significant changes to their work after returning from the center's courses. Honorable Prime Minister, Your Excellency, in terms of the conference overview, the conference program is in three parts. There are the opening ceremony, then the three-day technical sessions, then we have one day annual general meeting, then we have a full day for sightseeing. The opening ceremony set the tone for the conference as we receive welcome messages from the Honorable Chief Ombudsman of Rwanda, remarks from our special guest, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, and importantly, the keynote address and the declaration of the conference to be opened by Your Excellency Prime Minister of Republic of Rwanda. After which, we all receive the vote of thanks from the Honorable Inspector General of Government, Uganda, and the current chairperson of our association. The technical sessions have been squashed into three days. Normally, we have four days, but have been squashed to three days, where the conference business will be conducted. These comprise of the country and expert presentation, group discussion, and network during in and out of session. The day four will be for the AGM, and then our agreed communique will be read and issued out to government and the public. Day five is devoted to sightseeing and realization, realization after a week's hard work. I know some delegates have expressed interest in catching a glimpse of the gorillas. So we will work it out and see how we can get them to go and have a glimpse of this important gorillas. The general objective of the conference is to bring together members of the Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Common of Africa, relevant international organizations and partners to share and learn lessons for the fight against corruption under the theme Combating Corruption for Good Governance and Sustainable Development. The conference will discuss the impact of the corruption on sustainable development in Africa and approaches to combat corruption. This will be achieved through sharing of experiences among the anti-corruption agencies, as well as experts and specialized speakers. Finally, to achieve this end, heads of anti-corruption agencies has to present the conference, uh, to the conference their innovative projects done in the fight against corruption. Call it success stories. The conference will be enhanced by sharing of country, regional, and international experiences by international organizations and experts working in Africa, and to offer anti-corruption agencies opportunities for international collaboration and cooperation. There is no gain saying that an effective approach to make institutions effective is to establish a community of practice, build professional networks, and create such opportunities for members to exchange fit, best fit solutions. So this week conference offers an experience sharing opportunities for all heads of anti-corruption agencies in Common of Africa to share innovative experience, best practices, and to learn from each other. The conference objective will be achieved through a combination of presentations, group work, networking, and others. The presence of the Commonwealth Secretary General at this meeting reaffirms her commitment to support member countries' anti-corruption efforts to root out systemic corruption at both national and international levels. She is keen, she has never 
miss our annual conferences, no matter how tight her schedule is. She is keen and committed to assist the anti-corruption agencies to achieve a meaningful and long-lasting effort to combat corruption and to enhance good governance on our continent. So, Secretary General, on behalf of the anti-corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa, I say thank you. Your dedication, your commitment, and your continued support to the anti-corruption effort, particularly in Africa, is unquestionable. Can we give her a, a clap support? She has done so much. Finally, I would like to thank Your Excellency, Prime Minister, for squeezing some time for us. We were a little nervous whether you could come at all, but your presence here has demonstrated a lot that we thank you for that, sir. Thank you for coming. And also to thank the heads of anti-corruption agencies, both the former and the current, who have traveled with me and have kept faith with me since Botswana 2011 to work together to build this formidable community of practice in Africa. And I quote, Mr. Tim Steele, which most of us know him, director in the UNODC at the time, make a statement, and I quote him. In fact, he was our major partner in supporting anti-corruption effort. And I quote him, he stated that, the Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Commonwealth Africa is one of the few formidable and successful anti-corruption agencies still standing tall on the continent, unquote. And it is true because since we started in 2011, we have always achieved 100% participation and attendance from all our member countries. Our conference format is unique because I make sure that every anti-corruption agency do a presentation or chair a session. Every agency is an active participant in our conferences, and therefore ownership of the conference or the association is unquestionable. My hope and prayer is that the association will continue to grow from strength to strength as we strive to control and reduce corruption on our dear continent. I look forward to an exciting conference. I thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Koroteng, for the conference overview and what follows uh, right after here, after the opening ceremonies. I now take the opportunity to invite our special guest, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, who is the Commonwealth Secretary General, for her remarks. And uh, Honorable Patricia Scotland was born in the Commonwealth of Dominica. She is the tenth of the 12 children and grew up in London. She completed her LLB on London University at the age of 20 and was called to the bar at Middle Temple at the age of 21. Her career has been marked by achieving a number of extraordinary firsts, not least of which was to be the first woman in the more than 700 year history of the office to serve as Her Majesty's Attorney General for England and Wales and for the Northern Ireland. While holding this and many other senior ministerial office, she was given responsibility in area for gender equality, domestic violence, forced marriage and international child abduction and from these positions promoted diversity and equality of opportunity particularly for women and girls. As the only woman to have been appointed Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Wales, she is placing special emphasis on mobilizing 
the 54 nations of the Commonwealth to tackle climate change, including its disproportionate impact on women and through women's enterprise to, uh, to build the resilience of smaller and more vulnerable countries, eliminating domestic violence and violence against women and girls in another, is another area of focus. Right Honorable SG, welcome to the stage. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, Right Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, Diplomatic Corps, Chief Ombudsman of Rwanda, Commonwealth colleagues and friends, good morning. It is my, it's good morning. <laughs> It's good to see you all here, and it is my real pleasure to be with you today in beautiful Rwanda for my final visit to Kigali before the whole Commonwealth family arrives for our heads of government meeting in June. I want to really thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, and the people of Rwanda and everyone here for the warm welcome back to your country and for today's vital and timely conference. But I want to give a very special thank you to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, and join my voice to the voice of the Chief Ombudsman, because what she said was right. What we need is the political will to address one of the most pernicious and destructive elements in our world, and that is corruption. And without that political will, we can do little. And many of you will know that one of my passions throughout the whole of my career, from being appointed as a lawyer at 21 till today, has been addressing this whole corrosive impact of corruption. And I am absolutely proud of the fact that I was the architect of the Bribery Act whilst I was in the United Kingdom as Attorney General. So if you want to blame anyone for it, here I am, blame me. But the other most important thing I want to do is to say a profound, and heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you. We have been on this journey together since I became Secretary General in 2016, and I've watched your passion, your commitment, your dedication, and your courage. Because we know to fight corruption and bribery, it takes courage. And so for all those days when you think no one was watching, nobody cared about how difficult this job is, how painful it can be, how awful it can feel, I want you to know that we are watching that we're grateful, and on behalf of the 2.5 billion people of our Commonwealth, I, on all their behalf, say to each and every one of you a profound and heartfelt thank you. And I think you should give yourselves all a round of applause. But I do want to thank Rwanda for hosting this most important conference. It comes at a time in our world when it has never been more needed. It is a troubling time. 
we are facing so many difficulties and we know that perhaps none of us need to be reminded gathering here of the destructive economic, social and political impact of corruption. Corruption undermines the ability of our countries to deliver inclusive and sustainable economic growth and social progress. If you look at the money we need to do that which we are tasked to do and the money we have globally, the difference between those two figures is the sum equivalent to that which is siphoned off by corruption. This is not a painless crime. Our people suffer as a result of the corruption. And therefore, we need to address it because corruption undermines the ability of our countries to deliver inclusive and sustainable economic growth and social progress. It persists as a grave challenge to the development and growth of all our countries, a malignant force in our societies. Matching up to corruption requires the spirit of Commonwealth goodwill, mutual support, experience, and expertise. Our present global context is challenging. Conflict, COVID-19, climate change, and spiraling costs of food and fuel. These are the conditions in which corruption can thrive. So building integrity into our systems of governance is more important than ever. So let us just attempt to quantify the problem. Globally, corruption leads to illicit financial flows, costs developing countries between about 1.26 trillion dollars per year. Africa loses over 50 billion dollars a year through illicit flows, equivalent to all annual official development assistance. The Africa Growth Initiative concludes that sub-Saharan Africa received nearly two trillion in foreign direct investment and official development assistance between 1980 and 2018, but lost more than one trillion dollars to illicit financial outflows. When looking at the whole of Africa, that figure rises to 1.3 trillion. And let us be clear, 1.3 trillion could lift the 1.4 billion people living on less than $1.25 per day out of poverty. Transparency International calculates that corruption costs the health sector $500 billion every year, more than the amount needed for worldwide universal health coverage. Every $100 million lost to corruption could fund full immunization for 4 million children or provide water connection for 250,000 households. And the damage goes beyond headline statistics. Of course, money that is stolen through corruption cannot be invested locally, robbing communities of vital inward investment. But these losses aggravate risk and uncertainty, disincentivizing private investment. And the, this further loads the dice against those who are already in poverty. Corruption is a menace that puts a devastating handbrake on the ability for communities and countries, indeed entire continents to thrive. It is simply unacceptable. So we should not accept it. It is not inevitable. So we should take action to stop it. The action should ultimately be shaped by the 
Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs are the essential framework for collective progress. Achieving them would deliver the solemn promise of all nations to leave no one behind. And tackling corruption must be a priority of the highest order, not simply because SDG 16 sets specific targets to reducing corruption, bribery and illicit financial flows, but because we cannot deliver any of the SDGs without tackling corruption. The big question is how. How we can successfully tackle corruption and deliver the SDGs. What is our statement of intent? What is our action plan? This is where I believe the Commonwealth has a big role to play. The Commonwealth collectively has made a statement of its intent in our charter. Our action plan is the technical assistance offered by the Commonwealth Secretariat to our member states. In fact, Commonwealth Charter has a strong relationship with the SDGs. Adopted in 2012, it was the precursor and in many ways the template for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development agreed three years later. The 16 articles of our charter match almost precisely the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the 2030 Agenda, with the addition of overarching Commonwealth principles of partnership. And it was interesting, if you look at who Ban Ki-moon asked to spearhead and craft those SDGs, I smiled when I realized that almost every one of them was a Commonwealth country. So, I think the world has a lot to thank the Commonwealth for, not least to thank Commonwealth Africa. These are the defining principles which all our member states voluntarily commit to upholding, just as the SDGs are the defining goals for the development against which we must measure ourselves. But we need more than principles and goals. We need action. So let me assure you, all of you, that with our three-pronged approach, based on research, capacity building, and strong collaboration, the Commonwealth Secretariat is 100% committed to helping our member states act on corruption. And this, as you know, is a personal priority for me. In 2016, very soon after Commonwealth heads of government entrusted me with the responsibilities of Secretary General, I convened the first Commonwealth Tackling Corruption Together conference. And this conference identified the clear need for a clear, simple, deliverable, pan-Commonwealth tool to help promote the integrity and combat corruption in public and private sectors. And the Secretariat responded to that need, working in close consultation with member states to develop the groundbreaking anti-corruption benchmarks. And I will never forget President Buhari at that conference when they asked him about what the UK and others should do. And he said, said very clearly, I don't need an apology. I just need them to send my money back. Give me my money back. And these benchmarks are there to make sure that others give the money back. The package of 22 measures ranges from the disclosure of assets and rules around political lobbying to investigations, prosecutions, and sanctions. Each benchmark is defined by a core principle and contains detailed guidance for turning that principle into practice. Across the board, they are consistent with the international standards, and in some areas, they go further to set new standards. 
For instance, we believe the Ant Commonwealth anti-corruption benchmarks is the first document which connects public and private conduct at such a scale. So the benchmarks are a tool for governments providing very practical support to help them achieve transparency and good governance in the corporate sector. And they are a tool for businesses providing consistency and clarity on pan-commonwealth trade and procurement, and providing companies with incentives to prevent and detect bribery and corruption. And I am proud to say that our anti-corruption work received an international excellence award, which was received by our own dear Dr. Karatang. And so we are very proud of the work all of you have done with us to enable that to take place. It speaks... It speaks volumes for our work, and it is something of which we can be really, really proud. That was the benefit of us coming together, working together, and being determined. So many of you have been part of that journey, and we all need each other on the road ahead. We would not have got where we are today without your commitment. We need each other, literally, because corruption reaches beyond national boundaries. So we need international cooperation to share information, track and recover assets, and stamp out jurisdictional secrecy. And we need each other to maximize the benefits of the transformative technologies of the 21st century and those that are offered to us. Take blockchain as an example. Corruption is strongly associated with intimacy, hidden transactions and distortion of results. But blockchain provides transparency and immutability. Corruption is associated with centralization and misuse of power. But blockchain brings new dimensions to the decentralization of power. Blockchain can serve a database which automatically registers transactions, records uh, such as financial transactions, which will be visible to the public and cannot be altered. Technology can help us to aggregate the data on government spending and contracting and to analyze it for signs of waste, fraud, and corruption and develop an early warning system for identification of risky officials. It can help us identify risk, risky officials and patterns of corrupt practices, such as whose family members got too many contracts. This is the opportunity we can grasp through technology. And this opportunity is something which we must grasp because corruption goes beyond national boundaries and is global in nature. The secrecy and jurisdiction have further made the anti-corruption work challenging. The cooperation and sharing of information are crucial in asset tracking and recovery of assets. We must develop and work simple mechanisms to recover ill-gotten assets tying in, lying in the foreign jurisdictions. The collaboration must go beyond anti-corruption agencies to the anti-money laundering agencies and to the authorities in the Commonwealth countries. And we can win the war against the corruption through collaboration, cooperation, and through the whole of Commonwealth approach using these transformative um, processes. And this is within our grasp. And this opportunity of technology is new and vital, but it needs the political will, the political will that has been shown by all our countries here today. And I underline the fact that we have to hug our politicians close. So we encourage and enable them to stay with us as all of your countries have stayed with us. For anti-corruption efforts to be the best, 
we have to have a whole Commonwealth approach. And it can be working together, learning from each other, and collectively setting the highest possible standards. And this essential ambition will be part of the agenda for the forthcoming Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting here in Kigali next month. So it's fitting and timely that we gather here for this conference, combating corruption for good governance and sustainable development in Africa. Our huge collective responsibility is the bond of trust between governments, businesses, civil society, and the people. So I applaud your commitment to upholding and deepening the campaign for integrity and against corrupt practice. And I'm sure that this conference will off offer us all a brilliant platform to share knowledge, experience, and expertise together. As ever, the Commonwealth Secretariat, under my stewardship, stands ready to help you in whichever way we can and howsoever we can. And I'm eternally optimistic that if we work together and work well, Commonwealth Africa and the Commonwealth as a whole will sweep corruption aside and create the lasting positive space for sustainable development to thrive and the people everywhere to, thank, to flourish. So I end as I started with my profound thanks and gratitude and commitment. And so I say, may God bless you for the work that you're doing. May God bless Rwanda and its people, keep you strong so that we will win this fight together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable SG. Thank you for your remarks. I now take the honor to invite our guest of honor, Right Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Edward Njirene, to come and deliver to us the key note address and officially open our conference. Welcome, Right Honorable. Good morning, Your Excellency Patricia Scotland, the Secretary General of Commonwealth, Honorable Ministers, the Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies in the Commonwealth Africa, members of Diplomatic Corps and uh, representatives of international organizations, distinguished guests, on behalf of His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, I'm pleased to join you today at the 12th Regional Conference of Head of Anti-Corruption Agencies in the Commonwealth Africa. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to this important conference and thank the Commonwealth Africa for having collaborated with us in organizing this conference. Rwanda is delighted to physically host this conference, which has been uh, held virtually twice for the last two years due, due to the COVID pandemic. The theme of this conference, which is uh, combat combating corruption for good governance and sustainable development in Africa, is very important. It is in line with uh, the Africa's Agenda 2063, which is the Africa we want, 
Aspiration number three, which provides for Africa of good governance, democracy, respect for human rights, justice, and the rule, the rule of law. This clearly illustrates the firm commitment of African leaders to uphold the culture of the rule of law and good governance. Uh, distinguished guests, Africa is making efforts toward improving good governance, although we still have a long way to go. African countries are committed to addressing corruption on the continent. So far, most African countries have ratified the African Union Convention on preventing and combating corruption and other international legal instruments on corruption. As required by international obligations, African countries have enacted national anti-corruption laws and established anti-corruption institutions. Almost every African country has specialized anti-corruption agencies to address specific crimes and malpractices, including illicit flaws, money laundering, embezzlement, and the conflict of interest, among others. Several reports have indicated that global corruption is now costing around one uh, corrupt, uh, is now costing around one trillion U.S. dollars annually. This has uh, severe effects on the lives of our people. This cost is very high, and it continues to weaken resilience of our communities. Corruption creates economic distortions and hampers investments. Investors who have who deserve a fair and the competitive business environment will avoid investing in countries where there is a high level of corruption. Commonwealth Africa member states can make a difference in this fight against corruption through strengthened cooperation and effective accountability mechanisms. Distinguished guests, in Rwanda, the political will to enhance transparency and accountability are key factors to implement a zero tolerance approach against corruption. By way of illustration, and as it was mentioned by our chief ombudsman, the, of the, the offense of corruption in Rwanda is not subject to any statute of limitation in Rwandan laws. And this implies that prosecution of corruption crimes has no time limit. To promote accountability and transparency, among others, since 20, 2006, the government of Rwanda adopted the performance contract system, commonly, commonly known as IMIHIGO in our, local, uh, in our national language. Under this system, every year, public servants sign performance contracts with their managers or supervisors or head of their institutions. This is done at all levels of administration, from the local district to ministries and embassies. In that spirit of preventing and fight any form of corruption, the government of Rwanda aims at using information and uh, communication technologies for, de for delivering services to our citizen. Many examples were given, and uh, let me tell you that so far, key government services are currently accessed online. Different electronic systems were developed and are now in use, including the integrated electronic case management system in the justice sector, the integrated financial management system, the e-recruitment system, as well as the e-procurement. Distinguished guests, as I conclude, I wish to recognize efforts made by the Commonwealth Africa member states 
to fight corruption for the last 11 years since the establishment of the Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies in the Commonwealth of Africa. It is my expectation that this conference will come up with concrete anti-corruption measures and uh, public sector management practices based on the rule of law, transparency, and accountability governance. As the corruption continues to emerge in more sophisticated forms, we need to come up with um, innovative ways to prevent and address this evol evolving crime. On this note, I have the pleasure to declare the 12th Regional Conference of Head of Anti-Corruption Agencies in the Commonwealth of Africa officially open. I thank you for your kind attention. Our guest of honor for the keynote address and for officially opening our conference. And now I would like to invite Honorable Betty Kamia Turyomwe, Chairperson, African Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies, and the Inspector General of the Government of uh, uh, Government Inspectorate of the Republic of Uganda, to come and deliver her vote of thanks as the chair of the association. Honorable Betty Kamia, as I mentioned, is the Inspector General of the Government of the Republic of Uganda and currently the chairperson of the heads of anti-corruption agencies for Commonwealth Africa. She is the former vice chairperson of the East African anti-corruption agencies, the former minister for land, housing and urban development in the Republic of Uganda, former minister for Kampala capital, city and metropolitan affairs, the presidential candidate in 2011, uh, the Uganda's national general elections, and she came fourth out of the 12 candidates. She's the founder and the first president of Uganda's Federal Alliance, a political party that sponsored her to run for president. She's a former member of parliament and the first African executive director of the Uganda Wildlife Education Center. She is um, a member of the Archbishop's Provincial Assembly of the Anglican Church of Uganda, which is the highest policy organ in the Anglican Church of Uganda. And it is to mention that, is that she's a born again Christian. She's an avid reader. She's an avid reader, writer, and political analyst. She has over 200 articles published mainly, mainly in the Uganda's leading newspapers. She is a widow and proud mother of six. Honorable Betty Kamia, welcome. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kaihura, for your kind introduction. Our guest of honor, Right Honorable Dr. Edward Njirenta, Prime Minister of Rwanda, Honorable Ministers present, the Secretary General, the Secretary General of Commonwealth Africa, Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, the Head of Public Sector Governance, Commonwealth Secretariat, Dr. Roger Korantenga, Koranteng, our dear host, Ms. Madeline Nirere, Chief Ombudsman, Heads of Delegations from Commonwealth Africa, fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the diplomatic call. Mine is a very simple but honorable task of, to convey a vote of thanks from us all to all of you 
that have performed various responsibilities in putting together this very well organized 12th conference of the regional uh, 12th conference of the regional heads of anti-corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa. But first, I bring you greetings from Uganda, where I come from and where I serve as the Inspector General of Government. <clears throat> Honorable guest of honor, on behalf of the organizers and delegates of this conference, I thank you very much indeed for honoring our invitation with your presence today amidst your other very important obligations. We don't take this, your acceptance and presence, for granted. We also thank you for your insightful and authoritative statement on the actions taken to eliminate corruption and also for the information that global corruption is costing close to $1 trillion a year. Investors will avoid investing in countries with high prevalence of corruption. We take that very seriously. Right Honorable Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat of Commonwealth Africa, thank you for your leadership of this association. When people see these things flowing like clockwork, meticulously, and almost effortlessly, they don't realize that there is an invisible force behind the success. Thank you for your strong and wise leadership of this institution and for your words of wisdom in your speech. <clears throat> Dr. Roger Korateng, Head of Public Sector Governance at the Commonwealth Secretariat. You are the visible force. Even when COVID-19 nearly stopped the world, you did not stop. You continued to work. You organized the virtual conference of 2020, and you put together all that needs to be put together and all the success that we see and expect. Thank you very, very much. We received information on time. It was concise, it was clear, it was relevant, and we received feedback whenever we needed it. Thank you very much for putting it all together. So far, it is so good, and I'm confident that we are going to have a great conference and thank you from all of us. Our host, Mrs. Madeline Nirere, and Chief of Ombudsman of Rwanda, and your entire team of the Office of the Ombudsman of Rwanda. We are lost for words. From the time we arrived in Rwanda, your protocol team was gracious, friendly, respectful, and very pleasant. They settled us in the hotels with great hospitality and the promise of a great conference and unforgettable stay in Rwanda. Thank you very much from all of us. <clears throat> Kindly convey our deep appreciation to His Excellency the President of Rwanda, the government and people of Rwanda for making this beautiful country a shining star. To the people who will be presenting papers and playing various roles and responsibilities during the conference and annual general meeting, thank you from all of us, because I know that it takes time and effort and commitment to put it all together. To fellow delegates, thank you for coming to attend the meeting. You are all very busy people, and coming here is definitely at the expense 
of some other important responsibilities. Please make maximum benefit of your time here, including particip full participation in the conference and annual general meeting, as well as enjoying this beautiful country. Finally, this is what I will take away from this opening of the conference. From the President, His Excellency, President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, whose message was played as we're waiting for the conference to start, he said, combating corruption may have serious political costs, but the price of, doing, of not doing so is much higher, particularly for the vulnerable members of our society. Thank you very much, wise one. We take your words seriously. From the guest of honor in this opening occasion, we thank you for your words of wisdom. This is what I will take away. Key government services are accessed online in Rwanda. This conference should come out with innovative ways to stamp out corruption. From the Secretary General of Commonwealth Africa, this is what I'm going to take away. To fight corruption and bribery takes courage and dedication. On behalf of the 2.5 billion people of the Commonwealth, thank you agencies for the work that you do. You also mentioned amazing figures, 50 billion a year in Africa in corruption, 1.3 trillion dollars a year, and other mind-boggling figures. We take them away from this conference. And from Mrs. Madeleine Nirere, Nirere, our gracious host, this is what I take away. To fight corruption requires political will, as provided by His Excellency President Paul Kagame of Rwanda. And finally, from Dr. Roger Korateng, Korateng, this is what I will take away. Because as we all know, all play and no work makes Jack a dull boy. So Dr. Said, Tanzania organizes the very best beach parties in the world. Thank you very much for your attention, all of you, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson, for that great vote of thanks. We also thank you so much. Um, on our guest of honor, we are now going to proceed with the official photograph session right outside there. And the delegates participate and accompanying our guest of honor for this other part of the event are the following. Our special guest, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat, the Chief Ombudsman of Rwanda, the Chair of the Association of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Commonwealth Africa, Honorable uh, and other XCOM members of that uh, anti-corruption agencies, Commonwealth Africa. Those are the ones going with uh, our Honorable Guest of Honor, together with all our invitees seated in the right in front. Thank you so much and I wish to request the rest of us to remain in the hall as we enjoy our health break which will take around 15 minutes due to the time constraints that we are having. Thank you so much. And you have been a great audience. Thank you.
My apologies. Uh, I also wish to invite uh, other heads of anti-corruption agencies, uh, representatives, to also join in the photo session. Thank you. Rwanda is hosting the 12th regional conference of anti-corruption agencies in the Commonwealth of Africa, which will be from 3rd to 6th May 2022. The conference is uh, expected to come up with an uh, important resolution, which will be useful in the fight against corruption, uh, particularly strengthening good governance, for achieving sustainable development goals 16 through fighting against corruption. Combating corruption may have a political cost, but the price of not uprooting it is much higher. In particular, for the most vulnerable members of our societies. For the participants, I'm very pleased to welcome them to Rwanda and trust that uh, uh, the conference will be successful. Yeah.